Ah, yes. Welcome to Couch Pilots, all of my friends, the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television, Pilots of the Past. My name is Jason, but you can call me the Black Bygone. And next to me, as always, is my modern-era man. His name is Captain Philip Restasher. Good evening. Bygones be bygones. That's you know what? what I always say. Bygone era. Mono we mono. Bygones be bygones. Let's put our guns away. Uh, mi casa, you casa? Um, casa mamacita. Um, shake what your mama gave you. Yeah, you win. Yeah. I can't beat that. <laughs> oh, boy. Good evening, Captain. Uh, you know what? It's um, it's always cool in the cab here. Is it too cold in the cab? No, I like it. Because okay. it's, it's, it's a... Uh, Keeps you fresh. It, we're in the middle of summer. You know, it's... it's Fourth of July is behind us. Oh, yeah. We, it, it was so far behind us, even in the last episode, we didn't even recognize it, I don't think. Did we? We didn't even talk about it, no. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to beat the heat, as they say. That's the only night that it's not uh, wise to go up in flight. As I'm oh, yeah. Because you don't know if there are missiles coming at you or, or just regular fireworks. Yeah, it feels like uh, we, we could be in the middle of a war. Oh, you know? okay. and, I, and I feel like that every day. Yeah. But to see the lights and the booms and the pows yes. and the... Yes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, anything exciting happened to you this week? I've... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no 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 excitement here all right um, i've just been cleaning my guns cle- like uh like real guns yeah look behind you so, you know i i got i got them on a rack in, in here now hey, okay yeah I, did, I didn't even notice that until you said something um what what is all this about safety security um we don't have a tsa obviously right and uh we don't know what kind of people listen to our show and at any time they could hijack the cabin, and so I, I got my guns ready. Well, um, okay, yeah, that's um, it's a, a little alarming, honestly. I, I we, there's as many flights as we've taken together, never once have I seen a firearm in in the well, cabin. I got a shotgun for you, for that, me. Yeah, and then I got AK forty seven for me because you're a better shot than I am. I don't even have my ARP card. Do I? I need to get one of those to have a firearm, no, right? No, you don't need any kind of card for it. You just have it. And just call yourself a, a, a member of the militia, but this is just this is just for safety purposes. Militia, we'll probably, yeah. You said, I mean, militia is kind of a um, it's kind of a divisive word. It's like it's decisive. Oh my lord! Um, why why all this right 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 now? What happened? Did something happen to you? Did you watch a documentary? Did you pick up a newspaper in the past twelve years? Oh no, I do, I do not I do not listen to the news or read the news or nothing like that. Um, I just want to feel secure. I want to feel safe. Um, I want our, our people, our listeners that are in the back of the plane right. to understand that we're armed and ready. So I don't want any fucking shenanigans. Okay. You know, my, my, uh, my wife, stewardess, my wife, stewardess, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's back there slinging drinks and peanuts. Yeah. You know, and she says every once in a while, she's like, Oh, there's, there's a couple uh, squirrelies back there. You know, and now I don't have to worry about it. And now you have uh, weapons. Yes, there's there, huh. there's other reasons for the, having weapons now. I but, think that's what I'm trying to get at. Is oh. what are these other re- what is happening? What what well, happened that we're now armed mm-hmm. to the teeth? Uh, we had a murder in our backyard last night. What's this now? We had a murder in our backyard last night. I, okay, wow. I feel like I'm just being completely ambushed with uh, information that. Okay, what what happened? Well, this morning the stewardess woke up, mm-hmm. and you know she has been fostering uh, baby bunnies, right? Right, yes. and, and they they have grown their fur, and they have came out of the little hole that has dead grass and fur on top of it. The little hidey hole. The hidey hole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that. Um, and one of them has been affectionately named as Thumper. Okay, he has not left the confines. of... Of the yard. All right. The rest of the his brothers and sisters and his mother left. They're, everyone's gone. Everyone's gone, except him. And uh, today he was found with, with his head decapitated. What? <laughs> his head was decapitated. By who? We don't know. Some Someone or something came into our backyard, and so Molly wants to get a BB gun. I said, there's no need to get a BB gun. That's not going to do anything. Right? AK-47 and a shotgun. Someone wanted that bunny dead. Somebody did not like Thumper. Wow. She named him Thumper. And so today, on Facebook post, she posted, uh, 
R.I.P. Thumper. And, Did she put uh, a picture of the uh, decapitated? Yeah. No, not the decapitated, but the oh, thank well, God. back when it had its head, and it was cute. What did you guys do with the remains? Uh, I did not talk to her about that yet. We have not spoken today since she told me that. The and, remains are in the backyard still? And, no, I, I'm sure they're not. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, my response was, that's nature. Who boy. Because it's, it's, it's nature versus nurture. So, so nature decided to decapitate a bunny. <laughs> yeah. But w- was any of it eaten? I don't know. I didn't get any more details. I think with nature, these animals, they, they literally eat each other, right? Sure, yeah. But if it's just a decapitate, like a, a beheading, and then they're gone. That's the thing. I think, you're right. I think it is a murder. It could be. So, you know, if it can happen in my backyard, it can happen on this plane. Blake? Yes. Hand me that shotgun. Here you go. <laughs> nice. Lock and load! <laughs> okay. Great movie. Wow. I love the movie Lock and Load. Great film, and now I am. I'm worried. Well, don't be worried because you have a shotgun and I have an AK 47. <sighs> okay. I shot a gun once, so we're good. Oh, that's right. But is that right before your 40th? It was on my, yeah, my 40th birthday. With uh, with Scott, with right? Biggie, yeah. Yeah, that was a great time, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, those were the days. Fun. Those were the days. When I lived wild, fast, and free. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I, um, I had a, a, an exciting weekend myself. I went to, I saw the new Jurassic Park movie. Okay. How was that? There's a, well, there a bunch of dinosaurs in it. Do they walk like a dinosaur? Um, walk like a dinosaur, and then they eat people. Do they eat people's heads off? Yeah. Because maybe a dinosaur was in my backyard last night. I didn't even. Wow. When I put two and two together, I always come up with four. Do you think that's what happened? Do yeah, think... when you put two things together, it comes up with four. No, 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 math oh. aside. Do you, think, uh, do you think a dinosaur was in your backyard? Uh-huh. They are murderers. Yeah. They're carnivores. Mm-hmm. Carnivals. <laughs> They're carnivals. They're carnival murderers. <laughs> Just like the juggalos. Uh, um, I want to say real quick here, too, that um, we are now sold out of our VIP passes for yes. CouchCon. Uh, we have a few elite platinum packages left, and then when those are gone, that is it. Yeah, it's uh, there's just ten of the elite platinum packages. Uh, we'll get into that here uh, in a couple weeks, mm-hmm. um, and we're going to be releasing the schedule here probably in the next month or so. Yeah, so everyone's gearing up. We already have a bunch of things lined up. We have um, we have Anne, uh, DSJ's uh, baby mama, and maybe even current thing. We don't know what's going on right. there. Um, she's going to be doing a strip tease kind of exercise, exercise kind of like demonstration, a feng shui, not mm-hmm. feng shui, but. Uh, What's yoga? That's yeah. right. And then we have uh, Lori Garcia and Dee Dee wrestling in banana pudding, refereed by DSJ. And the winner, I will marry. I like it. It's going to be great. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you have your, uh, your your special VIP episodes where it won't be released. It's only uh, – we'll do a live show, and it won't be released to the public. We yep. uh, definitely have uh, singles mixers. We have two or three of them, I think, playing this, this time. Oh, that would be great. That would be great. And, so, I, and I do want to say, too – we were talking about trying to get like a Kevin Hart type or a Bill Cosby type sure. performer. We have Bill Cosby. Really? We have Bill Cosby. Great. Yeah. How, what was the price on that? Uh, it was like 300 bucks. It was like nothing. Oh, all right. It's like nothing. Cool. Because I mean, I was, I was researching that and it was literally like a thousand, like hundreds of thousands times that amount before. You know, it was like, sure. Like he, he was like, just have him show up somewhere. It's like 250 grand. Huh. Have him perform for like, you know, 15 minutes was like a half a mil. Wow. 300 bucks. I wonder why it, such a big cut happened. I don't know. Um, it maybe must be like a... Like like, booking like, gigs or something? Or? Yeah, maybe he's got a gap in the schedule, or um, maybe he considers this some sort of charity thing that he can write off his taxes. Oh. I don't care. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. I don't we, care. We got a great deal. 300 bucks. You can see Bill Cosby in the flesh... He's going to be doing an hour worth of comedy, and he's going to be the master of ceremonies throughout the weekend. He will he will be doing a lot of hosting uh, of, of the events. He's going to be one of the singles. He, he's um he's doing the um he's doing like there's like a mixology class, um you know like oh, making cocktails and stuff. Sure. He'll be hosting that because he was for the he, mixer. He was uh on set and was kind of a. Uh, he kind of gave him uh, ideas for the movie Cocktail. Yeah, with Tom Cruise. What do they call that? An advisor. That's what. She, God damn no, it. Advisor, cult, consultant, whatever. Because um, he, he did that in the uh, in, in the late 50s, early 60s, before wow. he was in, in show business. A lot of martinis. Hey, I had a martini the other day. 
Oh yeah, you sent me a picture. Yeah. Are you kind of rolling your eyes? Yeah. Tell me about that. It's like sugar water with a bunch of yeah. hard alcohol at, yeah. the, at the end of it. You went to Martinis. Yes. And what did you see? Uh, the guy from House Simp sees it there. Was he the guy at the door? Um, I don't know if it was him or not. It could have been. Was he a fat guy? No, he wasn't fat. So it probably wasn't him. How was he? Like he wasn't fat. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, it probably wasn't him then. No. But uh, yeah, we had margaritas. Uh, not, I mean uh, martinis and. I wasn't impressed. Did you have fun down there at all? Oh no, we just sat there and had our drink and then left and talked to anybody or anything. So you didn't you didn't like see a, a concert on the riverfront or walk around? Well, we walked around the concert. We what concert was it? It was the Eagles tribute band. We just we just walked around the outside of it because mm-hmm. why why pay why pay for for the milk when you can have the cow for free? Milk. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I get that. Uh, yeah, Martinez is fine. Yeah. That's a, the riverfront felt, is in a felt, time of transition. I felt, uh, I felt like there was like kind of snootiness was there. You know oh, really? I mean? Yeah. It's the building's cool on the inside, but like a lot of the booths and what have you are kind of like janky and tore up to where I feel like the, its best days are are behind sure. it. You know. Anyway, it's it's a cool spot. I think it's fun. Made Marianne goes down there a lot. Oh, nice. You know, you're telling me. Um. What else is going on? I don't think anything. You got any fan feedback? Uh, yeah, we got a voicemail, but I can't play it. We're gonna play it on the next episode. It was a lot of cursing. No, I don't have the adapter. It's in my car. I don't know who it is. I'm so excited. I can't wait to find out. All right, uh, well, but let's... I but I do have one that uh, I do have a little special thing that uh, a couple weeks ago it was Monday. I was having a beer before we recorded, and I went on Facebook and I was like, "Hey guys, you know we record on Mondays." Why don't you do some roasting of us, and we'll read them on the podcast. Oh, my God. Didn't we, didn't we have also a poll on there about Melissa Etheridge and Michael Jackson? Uh, on Twitter, but nobody ever did anything about it. Oh, I thought there was like 11 <laughs> responses to it. I don't know. I don't know how to read Twitter. If there is, I would like to know, because I, I, can't, I don't understand Twitter. I can't see what happens. Well, while you're pulling up your, your roasting of us, which I, I did hear these, and they were delightful. Um, I will say that we had a kind of a little. You, you were obsessed with Melissa Etheridge. Oh yeah, I have been since I have been. I went and looked online after that night and uh, to try to see if I could see her live in concert anywhere right. in the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I can't afford that. Oh, so, so she will be in the area, <coughs> but you just cannot afford it, right? Really? So she is touring right now. Oh yeah, where's she going to be? Uh, it's St. St. Louis and then like Indianapolis or something. What does she want for her tickets? Uh, the VIPs are six hundred and fifty bucks, and then regular seats are like one hundred and twenty. The fuck? Yeah. Jesus, man. All it's right. like, come to my window. I'm like, hey, I can't afford it. Hey, come to my concert. No, thanks. Hey. hey. Um, so we had a Melissa Etheridge versus Michael Jackson. Uh, I think the only detractor from Michael Jackson was Adam Z saying he doesn't vote for any PP touchers, which that's fine. I get it. But I think Michael Jackson won handily. If you need proof, I'll try to pull it up. No. I, I mean, I know what's good and what's not good, and I know the kind <laughs> of people I hang out with, so... <laughs> I'll, I'll take. You're Melissa. the one who put the vote out or the uh, poll. Well, up I know, there. but I mean, you should have picked Melissa Etheridge if you had any kind of decency in your life. <laughs> All right, your life. So basically, here's what I wrote. I wrote: True fans know we record on Monday nights. Let's hear your best Captain Burns, Blake or Jason, so we can read them on the show. Go, hurry! All right. First off, uh, do you want me to tell you who it was, or just you want to guess, or what do you want to do? Oh, yeah, um, nah, I already heard, oh, I know, I already know, so I don't know exactly. All right, but. so Kevin Clark says, Captain Restashur's back goes out more than he does. But yeah. boom. Pr- probably pretty true. Pretty true. The Black Magnet likes his ladies like he is fire extinguishers. They put out. Um, yeah, also true. I mean, it, sometimes the truth hurts. Yes, yeah, not many of these are fake. My mom, know, my mom knows how to Facebook better than Jason. <laughs> that was from Stephanie Clark. That was I'm, good. I'm proud of that one. And I like how the Clarks, uh, they didn't just gang up on one person. They burned both of us, you know? Yeah. Uh, Stephanie Clark says, Blake's favorite activities are talking to his dog, bowling, and having anxiety about his pool. <laughs> Very good. Lord Garcia says, I'm pretty sure Jason is patient zero for the AIDS virus. Also, your 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 surname is Quagmire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's yeah she's a real funny lady. Blake, how is it possible to be obese and malnutritioned at the same time? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Very good. 
Uh, Dustin says, I thought DSJ had at least the least amount of chromosomes on the show until I heard Captain on the <laughs> Ghost Watch episode. Because <laughs> I was intoxicated. All right. Ha ha. Uh, Kevin Clark then says, right size, wrong shape. DSJ actually has an extra chromosome. And then Dustin says, dude, I don't even know how magnets work. You think I understand chromosomes? Nice. The two are more related than you think. Yes, and this one is from our good friend Tyler Abercrombie and Fitch. Blake sucks at podcasts, so he quits. The, he quits, but then starts the podcast again. Then quits, but once again starts again. So Blake's not only a failing at podcasting, but also at not podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> so we're left with the self-deprecating, two-time failing, pretzel eating. Nearly toothless, 300th episode promising of IBWIP, depressed, cigarette smoking, fuck, that deep down, and I mean deep down, we all really fucking love you, man. And Jason's financially in shambles and mails his daughter's cries, wait. Makes his daughter. It makes his daughter cry about littering. Yeah. All all accurate. Yep. Got more to go. More to go. Yeah, and this is probably the, the most activity we ever got on a post before. Yeah, well, as soon as someone says, yes, we can make fun of you, right. we're, they're ready to jump aboard. Uh, DD from Australia says, Air Force One is the only aircraft that this is a required sign above the cockpit door. And it says this side this up. This side up. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Captain Restasher, is it true Harvey Weinstein wrote to you complaining about your attitude toward your past... 300 why 300 girlfriends and then um lori garcia chimed in he got hands on training from kevin spacey oh hey so thank you for all the the burns yeah it burns so good no they were good they were creative they were good they, to be honest with you they, they, they weren't burns they were just factual information that people posted in a funny way just our actual faults <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I found the results. Okay. Uh, the, um, it was 73% uh, percent Michael Jackson, 27 Melissa Etheridge. That's from 11 votes. And, yes, uh, Adam Z from Lobo Podcast says, I would never vote for a PP toucher. And I responded, let he who has never touched a PP cast the first stone. Very good. So um, so I was the only one that yeah. voted for Melissa Etheridge, that looks like. <laughs> no, not out of 11. I think he probably had two or three votes. Yeah, all right. So that's not bad. Come to my window, voters. Yeah, wh- whoever whoever voted for Melissa Etheridge, go to his window. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. But don't eat the baby's head, bunny's head. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. Oh, my God. <sighs> I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice, hmm, tumbling down the rabbit hole. I see it in your eyes. Yeah, the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is expecting to wake up. Ironically, that's not far from the truth. Do you believe in fate, Neo? I know exactly what you mean. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is the first. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what it is? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us, even now in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window, when you turn on the television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth that you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you are born into bondage, into a prison you cannot see, taste, or touch. A prison for your mind. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed, and you believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah. Yeah. For a guy who's never seen any movies... I'm killing these monologues. I read them because they're they're famous and they're fun, and I, I never ex- I have no expectations of you to get these right. Cause I, kn- I know, you know you'll what? see. That's a, that's why we've been friends for so long. You have absolutely no expectations of me because you always say I never see any movies, but uh, somehow you have your uh, fingers on the pulse of pop culture and you nail all of them. I use context clues. 
Okay. You're like when I said the word driving me? and Miss Daisy. Yeah. And, and pills. And, and uh, pills and the name of this film is Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah. You caught all of that in yeah. there. Today we discuss the pilot episode of the Groovinians from the year of our Lord 2000 and two. Great year. Very good year. I'm not going to lie. That was, you know, uh, that was one of those one of those years that you could uh, say it forward or backwards, like Bob. Oh, that's right. A, yeah. a, a soliloquy. Now, would Bob backwards be Dodd? The da da da. <laughs> Who sang that song? I don't have any idea. Uh, driving Miss Daisy. One year at driving the band Driving Miss Daisy that we all know and love. 2002, one year removed from 9/11. Mm. Right? Yeah. Okay. That was still a great year. Oh, I was getting all kinds of. I was slinging all kinds of poutine in two thousand one, two thousand two. Two thousand one. Did you ever? Did you get nine eleven ass? Oh, I got tons of nine eleven ass. I. Uh, that's where I had. Uh, I had an affair with that married girl, the redhead who wore suspender uh, suspenders and little uh, short uh, chucks. Is this the one with the metal rod in her back? No, I want. I want them all to be. She that. was. She wasn't married. <laughs> Um, yeah, nine eleven. I think this is... girl's name was Stephanie something or another. I don't oh, remember. Boy. What she had overalls, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah, it was so cute. All uh, right. Um, <laughs> I think about the movie uh, Wedding Crashers, and towards the end, Owen Wilson hangs out with Will Ferrell, and they go to like a uh, they go to funerals to pick up chicks instead of weddings. Nine ah. eleven was kind of like a funeral for this country. So almost any lady after nine eleven was uh, ready for the pickings. Oh, yeah, ripe for the pickings. Ripe, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just basically... Sweat, wet, and got to go on like a turbo vet. 9-11 happens, towers come down, ladies' uh, legs open wide, right? Sure. That's how it is. That's yeah. one of the, the slogans. Ladies, open your legs wide. Let's make this country great again. Did you... So, did that happen to you? What? As, as a direct result of 9-11, you had... Oh, yeah, I just... I, I acted really upset about what happened, and, you know, and, and like... Talked about having nightmares about, you know, my apartment. So you played up the down. sympathy card for yourself. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. Smart. God, you're a master. You're that age. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Do you ever think about writing a book and then giving it to me so I can read it and then apply what I've learned from that? If book? If I write the book, will you read the audio book version? Yeah, and then you'll I have to guess that, what book it is after I read it. I don't know. Supposedly, I can, I can like write a book and like post it and like have an audio book like just for like I don't have to pay anything. Like, yeah, you go on Amazon. Yeah, I know a guy who has a book on there. Oh, I think I think Derek that I um do the oh importance. from Derek and the Dominoes. No, Love no, no, no. Oh. from the uh, the importance of seeing Ernest podcast. Oh, okay, yeah, he has a book that he wrote. And it's on Amazon. Yeah, he sold my wife a car. Mm-hmm. Boy, he's he's a he's a salesman through and through, oh, isn't he? That's he was born and born and bred to be that. I way. tell you, we need to get him back on this show, and he needs to tell us how he cleaned up on nine eleven. You guys can have a little tower off, <laughs> and you can tower, tower off. off. I like it. <laughs> oh boy. 2002, so many years ago, it seems so close, but yet it's so far away. So we have to think about that year in terms of what happened so we can think about this pilot and give it its propers. Sure, we can't judge this. This is 16 years old. Yeah, it's not fair to the pilot. Yeah, that's right. You did the math right. Um, as we all you don't know. don't have to comment on my eye movements. <laughs> Maybe I just have rapid eye movement. Are you, are you in the middle of REM sleep right now? <laughs> are, are you doing this show in your yeah. sleep? Stand in the place where you <laughs> podcast, talk into the mic. <laughs> Think but, about why <laughs> it's not successful. <laughs> You're not doing it right. What, well, as we've said so many times before, what defines success? That's true. You know? That's true. Well, remember that podcast, Serial? Mm-hmm. They say that changed the face of podcasting, right? I never Ten listened. episodes. I never listened to it. They only had 10 episodes. Really? We've got 10 times that. Plus, we got 13 times that. Man, we should be rolling in I'm the just, fame. I'm just saying, man, that, that serial in and out like a British comedy, you and I are going to stick around the long haul like freaking Cheers or Bonanza. Yep, I hear you. All right. We're going to we're gonna have to scrape us out of here. <laughs> uh, so, 2002, physically, as we know, we can't go back there. Just like we saw in Back to the Future, the film you saw very recently, um, that's in the science fiction of the video store. Okay. You go to science fiction, that's where it is. Science fiction means it's not possible yet. It's related to science. So that means we can't do it. We can't actually go back in time. Right. So we have to think about this and go back to 2002 in, in our, our minds. minds. Because we can't do it physically. Right. July 1st, Bashkurian Airlines, flight 2937, Tupelo 2U154, and DHL German cargo Boeing 757 collide in midair. Over 
Uberlingen, South Germany, killing 71. How does that happen? I mean, we've been flying for years. We'd be flying. And we've never come close to hitting another airplane in the sky. I mean, on the tarmac, landing, that's a different story. Right. We've had our, we've had our issues, but... It's dark sometimes, and I yeah. got those little flashing lights. And the, on the at the airport, the airport is a speck on the map of the entire. Oh world. right! And all these airplanes are going there, but up in God's b- great blue yonder, it's a wide. There's plenty open of elbow sea. room. Totally, and to have two collide, boy, as a pilot, and I'll speak for you as a pilot, it's one of the greatest tragedies of all time. Very much so. R.I.P. Oh man, uh, July 9th, seventy third All Star Baseball game. Uh, seven to seven tie when both teams ran out of available pitchers at Miller Park, Milwaukee. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, I remember it, and I, I did, that that was kind of like the downfall of the All Star Game, in my opinion. That's kind of my question. People, the All Star Game, in theory, no matter what sport, seems it should like be the, the greatest thing ever. It should be right, right. But arguably, it's this is it's a piece of shit. It's always a letdown. Always a letdown. I remember when I was a kid and I watched the All Star Game. It was cool and it yeah. was awesome. Who 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 are the players you're excited to see back then? Uh, Mickey Mantle, Craig, Craig Biggio, Jackie Robinson, the Babe, <laughs> Lou Gehrig. Before he got a, a disease, ironically, the disease has got the same name as him. It's so weird. Right? That's a weird. And thing. then he said it was the I'm greatest like, day of his life. Right. I was like, no, 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 no it's not. not oh no, he's like, this, I'm just the luckiest man in the world. I would say the luckiest man in the world dies at exactly 100 years old with no diseases <laughs> in his sleep, rather right. than be eaten alive by whatever the fuck the disease named after him yeah. was. But I used to love the baseballs. Glenn Hubbard, Bob Horner, Ron Kittle, hmm. Carlton Fisk. Just want to name a bunch of Atlanta Braves and. Chicago White Sox. All people that I assume were definitely baseball players and you saw in action. Yeah. What does it determine? Because sometimes an all-star game determines who gets home field advantage well, yeah, or they, something. Yeah, or? They, they do that. It's like who gets home field. They do that in baseball. Who gets the home field advantage? World Series? World wise? Series. Okay. So that's, they do that in baseball. Yeah. Don't they do something similar in other all-star games? I don't think so. No? Okay. They wanted to make it count, is what their slogan was. Sure. Now it counts or something like that. Whereas before it was just bragging rights. This is jerking off, right? But then jerking I, their gherkin. It, it, if it doesn't mean anything, and even if it got home field advantage, who cares? Because the majority of those people aren't going to the, the World Series anyway. Well, the, your team gets an advantage because they get an extra home game. Okay, but like bo- a lot of the guys there are probably like, hey, you know what? It's Is it halfway through the season like most of them are? Yes. Halfway through the season, you probably have a pretty good idea where you are. Sure. Right? So some of those guys are like, we're not going to the World Series. Right. Fuck so, it. yeah. So basically, it's just an opportunity for you to get hurt. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's why football players don't don't ever go anymore. Yeah. Because theirs is at the end of the, the year. The Pro Bowl, right? Yeah, it's at the end of the year. It's a, it's a week or two after the Super Bowl. No, right? it's it's in between. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is dumb, too. But, yeah. Oh, well. <sighs> Who cares? Um, Sports ball, am I right? <laughs> July 20th. Bartenders doing tricks, like we were just talking about with Bill Cosby, um, starts a, a major fire at the nightclub in Lima, Peru, that kills 25 and injures 100. Ha, wow. They must have been setting alcohol on fire or something, right? That's the only, that's the only thing. That's yeah. the only thing it could be. Unless the entire club was made out of magnifying glasses. And there was a, a troop of ants that came marching on. <laughs> yes. Because they, they left like a lemon... Like out on the counter, and a bunch of ants came in. And since the pole place was a bunch of magnifying glasses, it was in the morning, and then the sun came in and burned up all the. I feel the lemon part is it's close to home. Did that happen to you? No. How about a lemon, a lime, a lime to a lemon? All uh, the fine women. <laughs> are you? Um, are you? Have you ever been a bartender? No, no. I think I have the skills to like talk and stuff, but then. Like I, I, I can sit here and I have a gift of gab to people that I want to talk to, but the people I do not want to talk to, I have a big problem with. Well, okay. How about this though? You're on the other side of the bar. You got the rag in your hand, right? You're wiping things down. Just like Woody Harrelson. Just like him. And you don't want to talk to the guy, but you know the guy has a bunch of ones in his pocket, and the amount so you I talk take my to top him. off. Oh, okay. So it's not like I'm going to talk to this guy because I know he'll give me a tip. It's I'm going to strip for this man because I'll get a tip. Yeah, it's easier that way. So that, would you talk to the people you want to talk to and just strip for the people you didn't? Exactly. Okay. It's perfect. Okay, I never thought of that. Can you get away with that at most bars? 
Some of them. If they have the right little logo on. Is, f- is there a Coyote Ugly for boys? There should be. What would you call it? Uh, Hound Dog Handsome? Snake and Bacon. <laughs> I thought it was Shake and Bacon. Like, most of my What's work... What's Shake and Bacon? I got you. For the, for the whole for the majority of working on that episode, I thought it was Shake, uh, shake and Bacon. So why did you think there was a snake? I do all the work before. I don't know. <laughs> Watch us like, I don't think it's Shake at all. There's a snake here. Oh uh, boy, I was 21 in 2002. That was my time to go and party. I to- actually, you know what? You know what I did? I was 19 for two years of my life. Did you know that? How's that? Um, I was such a good kid, really. And I didn't get any trouble. That I was like, I need one more year to rebel. So I was 19 for two years, and I went right from 19 to 21. I was, really? I was never 20 years old. That's awesome. It, it's an odd thing, but it's I, I took a lot of liberties that year. Did um, you do a lot of deaths? Do a lot of what? Deaths. Did I do a lot of deaths? <laughs> what does that mean? Tweet us if you know what I was talking about. Oh, please tweet us. I have no idea what that means. I'm, I'm not even going to Google it. Um, you were So that would make you 27. Yep, I was 27. And you said you were slinging it, right? Oh, like, like so much hash God browns. Damn, it was so good back then. <laughs> so good. It was, was kind of like I had too many choices. You know what I mean? Variety is the spice of life. Right. But the, the problem is you have too many choices and you're bad at making decisions. Mm-hmm. You, you don't always pick the right one. Like the Mary with the rod in her back, probably, probably would, could be, still be happily married to her. But since she had a rod in her back and I had to do all the work in bed, yeah. I was like, can't have Do you think it. she still has a rod in her back? I'm, I'm sure. Hmm. That, was her posture fantastic, though? <laughs> Excellent posture. How, how heavily did For a weigh? hairdresser? Yeah. Perfect posture. As we all know, most hairdressers are terrible. terrible. They're, all, they're, they're hunched, hunched over, over all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scrubbing people's feet. Why did we choose to watch uh, the Groovinians? Uh, four simple criteria for this season, season uh, 14. Uh, we're watching all cartoons. So uh, the first pillar is it has to be animated. Second of all, uh, it had to be a one and done. Only one episode was made, whether it aired or not. Say it with me, everybody. Is irrelevant. Ah. Uh, next, we had to find it on the interwebs because if we can't find it, we can't watch it. And it's got to be free because we can't pay to watch these. No, we're not paying. We're not paying shit because you know what? As soon as we start paying, we have to pass that along to yep. our listeners. Yep. And we're exactly. not going to do that. That's, That's our promise to you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Think of all those Japanese exports that are going to have that tariff on them. We're gonna, we're, who's going right. to pay for that? Not me. I'm not paying for any of that stuff. I'm not paying for any of that. I don't need a Nintendo. No, I don't need a Nintendo. Not at all. Do you, um, did you, that's all four. Yep. You named all four. So you say, well, where can I find the entire episode of Groovinians? But you can find it by subscribing to Couch Pilots in Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice. And then simply click on one of our classic. Or go to YouTube. And, and you, you know, know what, what to do, do too. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. Hey, hold on! Oh, hold on to those guns! All the rattling, shaking them off the holder. Hold, hold on! Hold on to that gun! I got a zip tie. I Holy got a, shit! Zip ties! I got zip ties. Jesus, man! Well, I didn't think about that part of it. All right, we'll get some zip ties. Well, I got some duct tape. We can clear blue summer nights. And if anybody fucks Oof. with us back there, brr, brr, I'm locked and I'm loaded. Fuck yeah. Do you want to mess with me, punk? Oh, you make my them. day. I didn't load them. I just think I just figured if we went back there and just had them in our hands, people would fucking straighten it up. I didn't bring any ammunition. So, so it's a like guns with no bullets. Yeah, but well, we, people don't need to know that. Take have listeners take their headphones off. Listeners at home, if you take your headphones off real quick, see. Okay, it's just the, it's just the the presence of the gun, right? Is going to make people shape up or ship out, or I'm sorry, shape up or plane out. Isn't I'm glad you're happy with that. Is it isn't like a isn't like a gun without bullets like the most useless thing in the world? No, you could chuck it at somebody or like hit them with the hit him in the head with the butt of the butt. I think it's the butt of the gun. The butthole. The butthole of the gun. So it's an intim- <laughs> so <laughs> so it's an intimidation factor. Yeah. Okay. Listeners, 
<clears throat> All right, put your headphones back on. All right, listeners, thanks for thanks for giving us a little bit of time to do some uh, soul searching. Summary: The pilot, two mis- space misfits named Jet and Glindy, who are searching for a planet called Groovania. Remember that noise you made uh, when you hit with the butt of the gun? That's how I feel about that summary. Yeah. It doesn't give you. It doesn't. It, a lot of times we complain if it gives too much, mm-hmm. and then a lot of times we complain if it doesn't give enough. It, it it's just like, basically, what it does is it like it, it puts the pain on the uh, on the stove, right. And doesn't even turn it on and just walks away and, and just slaps it. That's like as useless as a gun without bullets to do something like that. <sighs> yeah, I guess so. God damn it! Um, you wait till interesting facts. Oh, okay. Uh, interesting facts. Already? No, oh, yeah, we're ready. All right. Interesting facts. Uh, interesting facts is a segment that Jason has devised because we needed. And that's what. It's, Go ahead. That's the way it sounded when Samuel Adams took his first drink of his first brew. Samuel Adams. The guy. Uh... I'm thinking of a colony person that would have a copper cup. And then what's with the pinky on the underneath it? That's kind of. Kind of. I'm gay now. Aristocratic. I was, whoa, hello, I was going to say aristocratic. Oh, oh, to describe my pinky? That's right. I was just telling you I'm gay now. <laughs> Interesting facts. Uh, don't, don't, can, I can't do this when you're doing that. Have you been whitening your teeth? I have. No, seriously. Yeah. Are you lying to me? Do they look whiter? Yes. I'm, I'm asking you, have you been whitening yeah. your teeth? Now I don't know if you're telling the truth or not. Uh, you know how I go on those long walks? Yeah. I don't. Uh, I throw um, headphones on, and then I throw a teeth whitening thing as I do it. You can tell. All right, cool. <laughs> Thanks. It's more. It's more a uh, uh, bait for for guy <laughs> for, 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 for for guys for and guys girls. Dicks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the eye of the dick just comes because I'm gay now. Yeah. I don't know about you. I mean, you can laugh if you want, but aren't you always trying to put your dick onto something white? <laughs> gay guys are no different from you and I. Which. <laughs> From you, I guess. <laughs> They're the same as I. Because I am a gay man. I got a funny story I got to tell you offline. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Interesting facts. Go ahead. Just don't talk about them, folks. Comrade rules in effect. Guys, just don't. All right? Just don't. Yeah. You know how Nike says, just do it? We're saying, just don't do it. Right. My, my teeth, they look noticeably white. No, they, were, they are. Seriously. Okay. All right. The, uh, look, how, look how proud you are. I, I never know if it's working. Oh, no, they are. No one said anything to me about it. Uh, the Groovinians. It's because their eyes are all the way up here. They can't see. <laughs> the we, Groovinians. We do this show for us, don't we? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, there someone, is there anyone listening? No one took their headphones off. Uh, the Groovinians is an American computer animated pilot created by Kenny Scharf and produced by Cartoon Network Studios. Mm fact okay it was aired on cartoon network's late night programming block adult swim on november 10th 2002 but it was also re-aired on cartoon network itself during the block cartoon cartoon fridays on february 21st 2003 do you have a time that it was i do not okay um all i can say is adult swim i believe is about 9 to 10 p.m in the evening central time until How? probably about four to five in the morning if we would have thought about this ahead of time we what we should have done before we started this season is try to get a hold of somebody at, 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 at adult swim all these are adult swim shows almost almost all of them we, um, yeah i think if we would have contacted them we probably could have got some swag. Well, or I, I mean, I do. Sometimes the the, the guys uh, way up top, uh, like Adult Swim, are the, like executive producers of this shit. Oh, yeah. And I ha- I tweet them on occasion when, when their name pops up, and I haven't heard okay. anything back. I don't know. Maybe maybe a, a well worded email could have gotten somewhere. I don't know. Does it matter? I, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. The, the first question they'd be is, um, how many listeners do you guys have? No, be, are you just doing this for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> they would say. And we have to. We're honest. We're yeah. honest pilots. We yeah. have to say yes. We're honest engine, absolutely. Um, its theme song was performed by, by the, the B-52s. B-52s. High five that shit. That might be the first high five we've ever had in the interesting facts section. Uh, the Groovinians is the first and only television uh, cartoon created by Kenny Scharf, a surrealist painter 
from Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Fact. One, one of the boroughs? Yeah, one of the five boroughs that uh, the Beastie Boys went through. Um, its art, animation, and concept were the result of his long work experience as part of painting pop culture icons in a science fiction setting. Hanna-Barbera's The Jetsons was the show where Scharf was most inspired. Fact. Okay. That's a fact. All right. Uh, big new wave names were chosen to, uh, to the music's composition, like the B-52s. Three of those members, Kate Pearson, Fred Schneider, and Cindy Wilson for the co- uh, soundtrack. Mark Mothersbaugh, you know who he is? Mm, no. From Devo. Oh, okay. Um, it, makes sense. Instead for the background. And finally, Bob Casal, uh, also with Devo, with some musicians of Mutato Musica, Crash Bandicoot's first game. It's a PlayStation game, but okay. Crash Bandicoot. Um, always for uh, the background initially. Okay. That's a fact. Fact. I mean. There's no disputing those facts. No. Whether I find them interesting or not is pretty irrelevant. I'm glad to hear you say so. Uh, the Gravinians was not picked up as a full series because of the negative reviews uh, received by critics and audiences. But despite this, it was nominated at the 30th Annie Awards as Best Animated Short, short Subject. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollars that tomorrow there'll be sun. The Annie Awards is an American award for accomplishments in animation. The Annies have been presented by the Los Angeles branch of the International Animated Film Association in Hollywood since 1972. Ooh. Fact. Interesting facts. Over nice. Twitter responses. You did a great job. Oh, well, thank you so much. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. I wonder if Jason got some Twitter responses. Um, no, I didn't. Hold on a second. I gotta switch over to this to get the pod. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the importance of seeing Ernest. I'm on that show. <laughs> hey, Barn. Daniel Day Lewis, Meryl Streep, Paul Newman, the greatest actors of all time. Well, this isn't about that. This is the importance of seeing Ernest podcast, a comprehensive and encyclopedic compendium of all things Ernest P. World, actor Jim Barney's greatest creation. Tune in every month as three friends, and occasionally a guest or two, navigate the silly, playful, and family-friendly waters of Ernest in a not-so-family-friendly way. We have a hell of a time reliving these childhood memories, and we invite you to join us in Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice. See you soon, Vern. <laughs> See you soon, Vern. That was Derek that we were talking about earlier, who's a salesman. Hey, Vern, I'm on TV. I'm on TV. I love, um, I love Ernest. I love Dustin. I love Derek. And together, the three of us get together and we talk about Ernest. You remember that guy? Yeah. He went to camp, went to Africa, he saved Christmas. He got scared stupid. Hey, that's not my place to judge somebody's I'll mental. say it. I'll, I'll be a man. I'll stand up and right. say well, it. Well, you can because you're like almost like an expert at it. I guess. That's a lot of fun to do that show. Um, Dustin is so heavily invested in, in the program that he went and visited the grave of Jim Varney recently. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with that. That I mean, you can't go much further for your podcast yeah. than that. That's, that's pretty about awesome. as, as far as you can go. Pretty cool. Uh, so check that out. It comes out on the 15th of every month because the 15th is uh, the, the 15th of May, I believe. Or of June. I think it was the June. Is the day that Ernest, uh, Jim Varney himself, passed away. So to honor him, we release our episodes on the 15th of every month. Great. We That's go through the entire catalog of Ernest filmography. Wow. Let's break down the pilot. Let's break down the pilot. Well, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Instantly, I knew it was the B-52s. Instantly. Instantly. Oh, yeah. I, I knew it before from doing the research, but it was very apparent. Sure. You're right. And it was... Um, they had like a lot of hip '60s kind of organs and rock music. It's and it's a fully fledged out opening. Right. It's it's a good opening. Yeah. I thought, right. Yeah. Definitely. Um. And I like you said it before, it's a computer animation. So like, think of like the Garfield cartoon mm. that was like computer animated. Yeah. You know what I mean. Um. And it's 2002, right? It's 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 rough computer animation. Right. Everything's very polished surfaces, clean lines. There's yes. not a lot of detail. No. It's very simple. Um, and there's the, this guy and this girl, and they have uh, they have uh, 
They look like plants, like flowers. They were like a flower thing. Yeah. When it first zooms in after the opening, it goes like you're in outer space. Oh yeah. And then it goes to like a planet, and then it, it goes, goes to, to a like neighborhood. But the neighborhood looks very like everything looks the same. Everything's in perfect grid. Everything, all the houses look exactly the same. And boom, yes, you see two people. They look like like plant people. Yeah. Daisies. And, and they're and they're they're doing uh, like uh, beatnik music. Like yeah. Jazzy beatnik music. Yeah, jazzy, absolutely. Um, the main guy. Which is Jet? He that is Pee Wee Herman, I do believe. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure that is Paul Rubens. Did not know that. That's and, interesting. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. He uh, he's he's kind of him and this girl are kind of a hippie duo, and they have a multi uh, eyeball dog named Was it Looky? Yeah, Looky. Yeah, and uh, they kind of self describe themselves like love, fun, and art. Like that's what they're all about. So they are like, they're, but they don't look like hippies, but their attitude are very hippie. I agree. Very artsy. Artsy fartsy, and that is a theme. Oh, excuse me, that is a theme that carries throughout the entire pilot: hipsters, art, culture, fun. Right, right. They see the word hipster like ten times in this. Right, and uh, so like the old man is like looking out the window at them, mm-hmm. and he's like gruff about it, like ah, oh, they're trying to have fun, and everything, and blah blah blah. And so all of a sudden, their next door neighbor, uh, this spaceship comes down, this square spaceship. You don't even really see the spaceship. Yeah. And uh, they drop him off, and he's the kid that lives next door that nobody's seen for like a year. And like, oh, there, there you are again. He's like, yeah, I've been at this this planet creep Greepers, right? Greepers, the the planet that they're on. Oh, is it's called Jeepers. I got ahead of myself. And the I tell you what, too, the surface of the planet it looked like Legos. Yeah, like, that's something I noticed. But yeah, this kid, his name is Nixon, and I uh, he was uh, voiced by Vincent Gallo. Do you know him? Buffalo sixty six. Hmm. You, you ever see that? No. Very odd fella, but he voiced this guy, and uh, yeah, he's a kid who's been missing for a while. Yeah, and like they're just like all nonchalant about it. like, ah, you're back, mm-hmm. and he describes this place that he's been to, and I, I right here, I uh, which is uh, Gravidia, is the name of the planet that he's been on. And he's Gravidia, like, oh, yep. it's, it's a blast, yeah, fun all the time. Yep. Um, and right here is where I noticed that the girl, is, uh, uh, Gl- Glendy, Glendy, Glendy. She has humongous breasts. Glendy has huge tits. High five that shit. <laughs> also, um, Jet, her boyfriend, um, you don't really know the nature of the relationship at this point, but is quickly revealed. He has a bit, of, a bit of a pompadour, right? A full pompadour, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Anyway, so Nixon's talking about uh, Gravidia, and he starts singing this rock song, and. He's just jamming out, talking about how this awesome place. There's like three or four different kind of like musical numbers in this. That yeah. it's they're kind of like half-assed music numbers where they just they kind of sing a song and it may last for 15 seconds, right? It's to keep everybody's attention. Yeah. So the kids are getting real excited. They're like, "Oh my god, this place you're go talking here. about. We're, we are in the doldrums. We have creativity running through our veins. We want to go somewhere where we'll be accepted and are allowed to." You know, expel this and have fun. Right. And then uh, during that, yeah, like you said, his grandma comes out, right? This weird old oh, woman. Yeah, and she pulls him by the ear and stretches his ear out. She's not like, oh my God, thank God you're back. We don't know where you went. That's exactly what I thought. She I was like, like, would you be excited? She, she was all pissed off that he's been gone. So uh, he he, basic, he basically is getting drugged in by this little old lady, mm-hmm. and he's like. On his way being drugged in, right? Yeah, he's like, here, here's the key to my apartment. You know, get the next space cab or whatever and, and go to Gravid- Gravidia. Yeah, so he throws it to him. He gets dragged in the house. We don't ever see him again. The kids are very excited, and then they get called inside of Jet's house. I believe it's Jet's house. And um, they, all of a sudden, like, Jet's parents, who are not thrilled with how, you know, how he is in general, sure. it's, it begins – it begins kind of like a, a kind of a game show kind of thing where they're yeah, saying, "Yeah, this is your boring life. Yeah, this is going to be the we're, right now. We're, what we're going to do is to tell you how the rest of your life is going to." Yeah, go. Glinda, you're going to be some like boring accountant secretary. Yep, and strapped to an office desk your whole life. Right, and and uh, Jet, you're going to marry Glindy's sister, mm-hmm. uh, who is is not 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 very attractive. Not as not as attractive. She, hey, you know as what? She don't have she doesn't have Glindy's tits. Uh-uh, I find that she shit. She have Glindy's tits. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and this is, there's this it, it's a weird game show kind of thing, and it's a really weird. They they show Jet like in a chapel, and he's going to be marrying this girl, yeah. and it's really kind of weird. And then uh, Glindy's like, "No, he's not going to do it." And then she she grabs him. They take off, 
And then this is the freakiest thing. Well, right before that, let me let me just say this. Too. <clears throat> I feel like a lot of this is kind of like thinly veiled symbolism, right? Sure. Like the they're, man, they're, yeah, they're playing to like the the idealistic kids who would watch the show. There's a um, a large tentacle that has wrapped Glindy up like this is her life, and it's all it's like covered in dollar bill signs. I right. don't know if you notice that, yeah. but but it's all like just like like lazy symbolism. Sure, and like oh now you're married to this woman and you're gonna be a slave and you're gonna be unhappy to this I woman. The rest I mean, of you. Yeah. What, what's that? I mean, no, I'm just, Let, last yeah. thing you said, real quick, huh? Um. And then yeah, like this is the this is probably the weirdest part of the show. Right? It was scary because like he they're escaping and uh, Jet's mom and dad and Glidia's sister are chasing after, and she's like uh, like Bridezilla, and it was like kind of scary. Like yeah, his parents and Glidia's sister turn like monsters. Yeah, and chase and them. chase them. <laughs> uh, they get onto the ship. They to take off to Gra- Gravidia. Yeah, um, and there's a a, three, a three boobed flight attendant. Yeah, yeah, and you know who that is. Huh. First of all, RuPaul. Like, it is RuPaul. Yes. You, did you recognize the voice or yeah, what? Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. That's, you didn't read the. You didn't read the IMDb. I, no, I didn't. I, I haven't looked at IMDb in years. That's impressive. Um, they they bring the dog with them. The, the looky the the multi eyeball dog. And yes, the three titted RuPaul can. I mean, it's perfectly casted, perhaps. Right. Um, anyway. They uh, they get on the and the plane is very groovy. Uh, RuPaul plays a character named Champagne Cavassier, <laughs> and uh, it's their flight attendant with three titties for sure. They they then arrive. That's the Cavassier. They arrive at J. Nice. Edgar Hoover Jetport. Yeah, which in no way, shape, or form are we to believe that we are interacting with um, Earthlings. Sure, um, we're in America. Nothing like that. But somehow J. Edgar Hoover. I think that plays because Jay wasn't Jay Edgar Hoover the then he dressed in drag wasn't that his deal like he was the, Ooh, I didn't know that. the head of the FBI and he was the head, he like wore drag I did not know that I have to look into that that probably makes him cool in these people in these eyes. people's eyes right yeah sometimes it's uh t- being ironic for the sake of being ironic is not ironic don't you think a little too ironic they are greeted <clears> at <throat> Gravinia by a tree named Z- Zazi that Nixon had mentioned yeah. to them Zazi and um. She's always rhyming. Yeah. Just, just to have a tree talking is weird in the first place, but she's always rhyming in everything she says. And uh, so j- she's like, you, you can come and stay here, but you got to find a place to live or something like that. And he's oh. like, I, I got this key that Nixon gave me. And she's like, here, put it in my slot. Yeah. And, he, and she turns around to where her butt would be, mm-hmm. and Jet shoves a... a, 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 a curly Q key. Curly Q key in her... And she giggles. Swipes. Oh, of course she does. And she takes them to their place, and then that's like <clears throat> the last you see of that person. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The roommates. There's a there's a pink lady, a blue guy, and then a hot yellow haired chick. Yeah. It's in red, I think. Yeah. Before uh, before you see uh, Jet and Glindy get to their this apartment that Nixon gave them the key for, you see the inside of this apartment. You get to kind of briefly meet these characters. The blue guy is named Suavo. And he is one of three people in there that looks like a sea monkey, and he's yeah. kind of mustachioed, and he's a, he kind of he, he comes kind of off as like a yeah muscle bound fella. Uh, they all have one eye, mm-hmm. and uh, the, the 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 yellow chick that's in the the hot chick she's in the, like red. Mm-hmm. She's pretty pretty hot. Huh? Sure, she's in there. Would you have sex with a girl with one eye? Um, that look like that, or like a human being with one eye? They look like the that. answer to both is yes. Um, they show up, Jet and Glindy do, at the place, and um, they are dismissed by Suavo as salesmen. And then when they ring the doorbell again, uh, Suavo looks through the door, and he sees Glindy, oh. and he really scopes her oh, out. Oh, he, like, opens it up, drags her in, and closes the door, like, within yeah. seconds. Like, oh, you're, oh, you're coming right here. <clears throat> and, and then the, uh, the other roommate girl, uh, she's into Jet. They go out and get him. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I like this guy. So they bring him so all So they in. obviously got tired. It's like... Three's company. They got tired of banging each other. Now mm-hmm. they got some fresh meat. That's right. And uh, they they're just getting introduced to each other, and all of a sudden, the clock says, "Time to party!" And the B fifty two's theme song comes back on again. Yep, it's a lot of uh, dancing, laser lights, anti gravity shoes, and disco balls. And I will mention too that the dog Lookie, when he barks, it sounds like a dolphin. Uh, is it always a dolphin, or is it different every time? I thought one time it was like a chicken. I think you're right. I think it's di- a different animal each time. There's in, this, and two, it, two times here. There is, is a laugh track. Yes, two times. It's weird. Like within I, a, with a, within the span of like a minute or a minute and a half, there are, there's a laugh track. The first it's time I heard it, I was kind of like. <laughs> first time I heard it, I was like, 
uh, I, I'm just I've seen so many pilots. That's just you know in yeah. my brain. But the second time I was like, oh man. The first laugh track is when you I think is when you hear the dog bark like a dolphin, and then when they are disco dancing, I think is when the laugh track yeah. happens again. It's it's oddly placed and unnecessary. Um, the party is a cut short because of the norms. Yeah, they're kind of two-dimensional beings, not unlike the Space Kataz guys we saw. Right. A lot of 90-degree, 8-bit, like, Atari-looking characters. Robots, and uh, they're, 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 they've are they're come to get the taxes or mm. the rent, and the rent, uh, the money is liquid, and they start pouring it in their heads, and then all of a sudden King Norman comes, and... The king, yeah, King of the Bland, right? Right, and, he's, and he, he, he's, he wants all the money, all the taxes, and... And he goes into this big song about money. Yeah, another another kind of half baked song where he's dancing around. And it's there is a part of this where it gets kind of scary again. Like, which which part do you think? During the song, like and when he's like screaming at Jet and stuff, it's like it kind of kind of freaky. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he's got goons too, and he sicks them on Jet. Basically, I think they're gonna like teach him a let like beat him up or kill him, him or something. Yeah, and then Glendy uh, shouts. Um, at, at the goons, and then she starts to squirt them with colorful paint. Yeah, because they come in, and, and like the name says, they're norm norms sure. bland. They're all gray and just kind of very right. simple looking. And they kind of get they get kind of freak out because they have all this colored spooge all over them. And they float away. They're they, ba- basically, they float away. They're like, I'm, yeah. I'll be back. Yeah. And then they, uh, and then once they once they leave, they they sit them down and they give them jizzerino cake. Yeah. Is that what they called it? I think so. Cesarino? Yeah, they're going to um, party and not worry about tomorrow. Man, uh, if, I were, if I were you, I'd be worried about turbulence. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. <laughs> uh, man, every once in a while, I I, uh, I have an answer from the internet to the, the question that I ask every show, and that's why didn't this work? Well, first of all, as I mentioned in Interesting Facts, the pilot was panned by critics and audiences, causing the episode to be dropped. But there's more. In, this came out in 2002, but in 2007, the creator of the show, uh, Kenny Scharf, or uh, Keith or Kenny, I can't remember which one it is, he, he complained to the New York Post newspaper that it was Paul Rubin's bust for allegedly having vintage child pornography. The charges were eventually dropped. And Scharf's refusal to remove Rubin's character from the cartoon that doomed the project. Hollywood was not very nice to me. The network owns my show, and they never spoke to me again. They treated me really bad. It was a little rough. So now I do my paintings again, Sharp said. Is that a hipster artsy guy just whining seven years later? Uh, maybe so. Yeah, maybe so. Just bitter. He says, I am not doing that ever again. I thought I was going to make money. I ended up getting paid 25 cents an hour for three years of work and being bossed around by network honchos. I went into debt for it. I would love to make more animation, but I'm not interested in making it with studios. Holly, Hollywood finds a way to ruin almost anything with imagination. Uh, when contacted, Cartoon Network spokesman Tim DeClaire denied that Ruben's involvement was a factor. He said, We did a pilot with Kenny and decided not to move forward with it. There's no specific reason besides the fact that this happens in television all the time. A pilot was just a pilot, and, and they created uh, and, and they are created so that can happen. That's why you don't immediately create 36 episodes at once. What happened is not unusual at all. Very good answer. Very good answer. A very PC, very yep. HR kind of answer. Not gonna, but not, 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 yeah. not going to ruffle your feathers and not going to insult anybody on either side. Just mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a very you know norm, king of bland answer, but probably not untrue to a degree. What would you do to improve the Groovinians? Uh, who is this for? Okay, this is what I think it's for. Are you ready for this? 1992, 1994 rolls around. You, uh, you turn on the MTV, right? And you got liquid television. Do you ever see that show? Yeah. This is liquid television. This is slightly racy, goofy, taking advantage of uh, kind of anti-pop culture and also um, the technology of the time. You go back and you watch Liquid Television. There are some weird technological things they were doing with that show right. on, on the edge. This is 2002's version of Liquid Television stretched into a 22-minute format. Right. Um, doesn't mean it worked, but that's that's how I see this. Uh, things I would change, I would have the characters of the B-52s be in it and have it be B-52-centric music. Yeah, they 
Oh man, they're Be- weird enough as it is. B fifty twos are like late seventies to like late eighties, but they said, you know what? We're kind of that that hipster nineteen fifties music vibe, right? With 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 a edge like a, a new wave edge. They totally have. Yeah, absolutely. You're a thousand percent correct. And they have behind that. There is a whole uh, fashion. And there's something that more, I think, that could have been exploited from the B-52s at the time if sure. they had allowed it to be. And this very well could have been an avenue for that. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I I just didn't like the story. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I, they're very planned answers, but no, it's a planned cartoon. Yeah, I, if, if we were to improve it, I think that the, the writing was really bad. Right. It was easy, right? It, like, yeah. I mean, it was just easy stuff. It was dumb. It was, you know, you can't have a character look up and down like at a like in three tits on a character you, you can't have that and, right. unless it's for a, a more older audience you just can't have it right you kids can't are, explain kid, that to yeah. a kid right. when you watch like um say you watch something that kids are watching today for kids and the mom on that show the mom's gonna have boobs because because moms have boobs right but moms don't have three boobs hmm. so when you have when you have a show that has a three boob character that's not for kids right what we were watching wasn't for kids, but the color scheme was for kids. The animation was for kids. The shitty dialogue was for kids. The the, the snappy, quick uh, songs. Were... But it wasn't a kid's show. Yeah. So when you ask the question, who is this for, you're exactly right. You have so many things. There were scary parts in it would yeah. be for kids. Yeah. That Bridezilla was scary as shit. <laughs> so many things in conflict with each other. But I tell you what, we're not the only people who saw this. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. And other people did see this. IMDb has a score. I'll tell you, I'm going to give you a little heads up. It's from 86 ratings. Wow. Out of 1 to 10 decimal points in play, what was the rating for the Groovinians? 6.5. It was a 3. <laughs> One of the lower rated ones. Most of the time, you can cast a net. On IMD, not a net footicello, you can just cast a net um, onto a, a IMDb, and you're going to get something usually between like 4.8 and 6.8. Right. Almost everything sure. is right there. Something has to be pretty bad <clears throat> to get a three. three. Yeah. And this is maybe just that. Critic Reviews Z Squared from TVTropes.com says the main complaints he has are his, its deranged animation, flat characters, horrible dialogue, and the randomness isn't funny at all. This is also the first, not including the dull artwork and the most hated cartoon characters thing video, to feature artwork done by Z Squared. So, um, deranged animation, flat characters, not wrong. No. Nope. Uh, viewer Reviews. Quoting Orange County from 2002, what the F? Okay, this is only... Uh, it's like Owen Wilson. Oh, wow, thanks. What the F? Oh, what the F? Okay, this was on only once on Cartoon Network, and I got to tell you, it was total, utter crap. There was no key pilot, or plot rather, no punchline, nothing witty, nothing exciting. It was all just boring, dull, and tedious. Although, kudos to their excellent cast, but why the hell do they want to do this in the first place? You know, we mentioned some of the cast already. RuPaul, right? Sure. Paul Rubens, Vincent Gallo, Dennis Hopper. You know Dennis Hopper, yeah. right? He was the voice of King, the King Norman. Or oh, really? King Blade, yeah. These are people who are notable. Some of them, mo- movie stars, definitely at the time. Why would they do this? Maybe they thought it was a cool, hip thing to do since it was a New York, Brooklyn-based uh, Right, they are trying to be like uh, Studio 51 kind of cool, maybe. Yeah, maybe so. Uh, worst cartoon pilot ever. That's from da- uh, Daniel Dell Four. He says, "I can't believe I had to see it for myself. What a, bi- a bad pilot or not? And it literally is. I'd rather be watching Phineas and Ferb than this show. This is like a CGI version of Angela Anaconda or something. I don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. Kenny Sharf is a good surreal artist, but he's a terrible animator. If Sharf ma- makes another useless animated project, he's going to get a different career." Uh, why would Cartoon Network air as god-awful mess as this, especially on their adult swim block? This is not Jimmy Neutron CGI. This is a CGI version of stop motion. This is the Toyland video of Cartoon Network. Thank God 
Uh, Cartoon Network does not need to air this ever again. The Gruvinians suck so much. This is like the 2000 versions of the Problem Solvers. If the Gruvinians partnered up with the Problem Solvers, that would be even worse. Thank God we don't ever see, need to see this again. Well, the, if it sucks so bad, why did that guy spend so much time writing that? It's not like he's like spent an hour and ten minutes talking about it. Listen to this. The Gruvinians was fantastic for those who understood Ooh. it. Well, I'm sure the previous poster had problems with the show, but that's quite understandable. Most Adult Swim fans are dimwits. I can't for the life of me find anything likable on, on the Adult Swim lineup. Those shows are all the same. They pass off a supposed insider humor as funny. There is nothing witty or funny in the self-aware sensibility of these shows, not to mention the absolute negativity and cynicism of them. On the other hand, I found Groovinians to be full of substance and good, witty humor. In fact, after several viewings, I taped it, uh, it caught... More, uh, I caught more and more topical cultural and socially themed jokes than I did in the first viewing. Also, for television production, I found the animation to be outstanding and extremely original. Can anyone who has uh, viewed this not say it was absolutely different than any other animation on television? Also, the fantastic soundtrack. The music was unbelievable. Mark Mother's Ball and the B-52s. The music wor- uh, worked great with the visuals and story. And also, it was just plain trippy. Didn't they just do the, the theme song that played twice? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so they didn't do all the music because there was still two more songs after that. Three songs. Just sit back, tie on a fatty, and watch it. It's yeah. raver material for sure. Whatever, stoner. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, mainly, people seem to not like it, except for that one exception at the end. Let's find out how you and I liked it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCF Airport. Local time is 11-11. It's the noisiest glass I've ever heard in my life. Which class? That one you're drinking on. The... Hope you drip on your laptop. Or what? 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 It's so loud. And then you put your pinky underneath it, like you're gonna. It's, it's got a handle for Christ's sake. I got three. Fa- look, look. I can't fit my look at my pinky. My pinky gonna fit in there? That's not comfortable. It's got to go somewhere. What do you want from me? <sighs> You know what? I think you need a few more Miller Lights. No, I'm doing really good. I, I, you only have I, one. I, I owe it to our UK friends just to slow it down a bit. <sighs> now we rate the show. <clears throat> we, we've done everything else except rate it. So this is the cherry on top of that delicious sundae. Creme de la creme. Mm-hmm. One to seven. That's the scale. One being the worst. It's a Roy Biggins. Seven being the best. It's a Brian Hackett. That and everything in between are characters from the 1990s television show called Wings. And if you've never seen Wings, this is probably not the podcast for you. Yeah, this is this is this podcast is for only people that have seen <laughs> and enjoyed. Well, no, I, I, I guess I should have said the 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 doesn't make any sense. There's no use going through all of them. There's no. Sometimes you tell me specifically to go through all of them this time. No. Okay. Well, one through seven is the scale. Uh, at the, this pilot, the Groovinians, lands somewhere on there. Captain Philip Russell, I turn to you. How do you rate the Groovinians? Uh, I, it took a lot for me to find something about this that I liked, and that's the boob bump. I'm giving it a boob bump because... A CGI boob bump? A CGI boob bump. Let's give this one a two. Wow. Bumped it up from a one to a two. Right. Yeah. You know, it maybe when I was a younger man, I could I could look at those boobs and, and feel something. You know? You have to be a younger man? I, at my age, I feel something all the time. Well, I think when you're a younger man and, and growing up... I probably age, wouldn't have noticed it more, as much as a younger man. I to be honest mean, with you, yeah. in my 40s, I notice boobs a lot more now. Okay. I, I'm just saying that this is, you know, Probably rough. Probably I was seeing them all the time. Jesus, man. <laughs> rough CGI, as a child, for me, would have done more than it would today sure. with pornography being as readily available sure. as it is. That's what I was getting to. Um, as a young child, yeah, I'd be like, ooh, that's kind of that's something. Yeah. Me and my age, no, that's nothing. This is a two. There's no bumps. This is not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it is not good. Right. It is not good. I, I, I would suggest our, our listeners not watch this. It really is. It's pointless, really. Sometimes our ratings align. Sometimes they're wildly different. You and I agree. This is not a very good piece of animation. Mm-hmm. The writing is bad. There's some really cool people working on it. Sure. That's, that, that's, that, that's, that will that's not a, get you a successful And pilot. that's the thing is you, you, you feel bad because a lot of these people we enjoy, we mm-hmm. like, yeah. we, we have respect for. 
but then you watch this and you're just like, they do. Did you just throw a check at him, but it couldn't have been that big of a check. Um, yeah, they, I, I, don't I know. think they were probably friends with that artsy guy. Most of these were people who were maybe friends, so. and they just did him a favor. Yeah, maybe that's exactly what it was. I didn't care for it, and with that, we closed the book. Thankfully, on the Gruvinians, and we will never speak of this show again. Ugh, it's highly unlikely. And uh, but won't you join us next time when we watch the pilot episode of the Amazing Screw on Head? Here's a little something to wet your whistle. A Civil War era secret agent with an extraordinary special power serves under President Abraham Lincoln. You can find the entire episode of The Amazing Screw on Head by subscribing to Couch Pilots and Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classical buildings. You all right? Or go to YouTube, please. And you know what to do, too. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like I don't take deep enough breaths or something. <laughs> My capacity's off. Oh, boy. Your capacity. With those white <sighs> teeth, you better get that capacity I level know. up. <laughs> I know, man. I'll be swimming in it before too long, hopefully. Oh, and my computer froze. Uh, that's all right, because you know. Oh, here we go again. Um, all of our contact information. Sure. Yeah, you can check us out on Twitter uh, at Couch Pilots Pod, um, Facebook, Couch Pilots. And um, Instagram, which we don't use, it's couch underscore pilots underscore podcast. We don't ever use it because nobody ever watched it anyway, looked at it anyway. Um, and, but most of all, the place to be is couchpilotspodcast.com. One stop shop, which Jason invented that phrase. Thank you. Um, you can check out any of the episodes. You can search by date, you can search by keywords. Uh, you can link to all of our social media. You can even email us from there. Yeah. Uh, at couchpilotspodcast at gmail.com. You can do it all right there. It's got a little picture of us. A well, little picture of us. A couple smiley boys. Back in the days of the of the kitchen. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I miss those days. We were young, dumb, and... What? Is that, I think I feel like there's another part of that phrase. Young, dumb. Um, young. We were young, comma... We were dumb, comma, and we were... And f- full of vigor. I think that's probably it. Yeah, couchpilotspodcast.com. Go there. Everything you need is right there. The only thing that's not there is... Uh, well, first of all, I guess two things. Three things, actually. Boy, boy it's really piling up. You can, you can find us on YouTube if you're so inclined. Sure. Uh, you can also call 910-PILOTS-1. That's 910-745-6871. 910-PILOTS-1. Call there. Leave us a message. We'll play it on the show. We got one next week we're yep. going to play. And then finally... Go to Patreon. Oh, yeah. And, and if you go there, you can support this show financially. Like I said up top, it's always going to be free, but Blake and I have to pay for certain things to keep this show going. And we're sure. happy to do so, but if you want to help us out, if you enjoy the show, the best thing you can do for us, first of all, the best thing you can do is tell someone. Sure. The second best thing you can do is click on the Patreon and say, I'm going to give you X amount of dollars per month. If you want to give us $5,000 a month, that's fine. Right. No problem. Right. If you want to give us $1 a month, that's fine. Anywhere between there. Anywhere between there. There's five, four or five different uh, tiers of mm-hmm. rewards. I mean, if you're, if you're going to give us money, we're, we're going to do something for you. Right. Um, whether it be uh, shout-outs or there's secret episodes. We have signed photos. Signed photos. Um, yeah. It, the, yeah. The secret episode, phone conversations, whatever it is. And then there's a new tier we just added, I want to mention too. And this is the inheritance tier. Oh, yeah. And this is, I remember we talked about that. This is top of the line. Great idea. Everyone has a clock ticking over their head, unfortunately. Sure. Uh, we are all not long for this world. So next time someone in your family passes away and they leave you an inheritance. If you were to pass that inheritance, bequeath it to the couch pilots, then that puts you on that upper echelon. We will come to your house. Get the, get the money we'll from get, you. Get it directly from you, and we'll do a show right there oh, yeah. at the visitation. At the, yeah. <laughs> that, we would do great. Mm-hmm. So, I, think, I, think that's, I think it's great. That's the, top, that's the new put, top tier. We're going to put a couch pilot sticker on the side of the casket. That's right. So it'll be forever with your loved ones. What if it's awake? Can we do awake or do you have to be quiet during awake? I think the dead people are never awake. They're always, I mean, they're, they're gone, Blake. Oh. But I thought they, don't they have things called wakes? Oh, is that where they put silver coins on people's eyes? Yeah. To make sure they don't I wake up? I think it has something to do with the water level. Oh, like the alkaline? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I agree. So um, if you want to do that, that's the top tier. That's the primo stuff. That's where the, all the hot action is. Um, Blake, 
any message of positivity you have for is is this something that you want to keep going? Should I keep asking you this? Sure, at the end of each that's episode? fine. Um, it's positively important. <laughs> not <laughs> oh, okay. to get not to rip the heads off baby bunnies. I don't care if you're a human being and did it. You come into my yard if you're a cat, a fox, a rabbit. Like a rampant rabbit or something. Mm-hmm. Don't come into my yard. Hand, hand me that AK-47. Here you go. This is great. I'm ready. I'm ready, man. All right. I, li- I, li- yeah. I was apprehensive at first. I love that all this weaponry is on board. It yep. makes me feel like we really are a part, finally, of Air Force One. Right. Exactly. You know? All right. RIP Thumper. I'm ready Love to lock you, and load. And with that, this pilot may have been rough, but it is always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks so much, everyone, and we will see you next time. We did it. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day.